What is up everyone and welcome back to another episode of History Behind the Horror. I'm your host Tay and for tonight's episode we're going to be talking about Outlast 2. Now a lot of people actually did enjoy our last episode which was about the first Outlast game and a lot of people asked me to go ahead and do Outlast 2 so here we are. Before we start this video I would like to thank everyone who liked the last video who shared it and also put it in the comment section to express their opinions about that last episode and for the ones who actually recommended me to do this episode. You guys mean a lot to me and you helped this channel out a lot with you guys opinions and criticism so with that being said thank you guys so much for tuning in and i hope you all enjoy the video Outlast 2 is a first-person survival horror game that, like its predecessors, Outlast and Outlast Whistleblower, is a single-player campaign. It is set in northern Arizona. The game continues the found footage characteristics from the first game. The player controls the investigative journalist Blake Langerman, who investigates the dilapidated royal area in Supai, near the western edge of Colorado. Langerman cannot fight except in scripted scenes, but must run and hide. He also wears glasses, which limits the player's vision if they fall off. The player can crouch, run, jump, walk, vault, slide, and climb, much like the first game, and can hide in lockers, barrels, wardrobes, beds, pools of water, tall grass, cornfields, and inside of houses. He has a new limited stamina meter and must manage how long he runs. Least they become exhausted and move more slowly. Langerman possesses only a camcorder which has night vision capabilities, though the camcorder's batteries are also drained when night vision is used. Compared to the first game, Langerman's status as a cameraman means he carries a more advanced camera, one with clear footage, zoom, and a sensitive microphone that can be used to detect distant footsteps and other noises. The player is equipped with an inventory system displaying the amount of footage recorded on the camera and the items they are carrying. Spare batteries suitable for the camcorder and med kits to heal are spread throughout the game. Blake Langerman, an investigative journalist and cameraman working alongside his wife Lynn, crash land in the Supai region of the Coconino Country region of Arizona, while following the mysterious murder of a young pregnant woman known only as Jane Doe. When he wakes up after the crash, Blake finds the pilot of their helicopter skinned and crucified and his wife missing. Blake makes his way to a nearby town, Templegate, where he learns that the town has sacrificed all their children in the name of God. Blake eventually locates Lynn in the chapel, captured by a cult led by Papa Sullivan. Sullivan claims that the temple gate lies on the mouth of hell, and Lynn is pregnant with the Antichrist. They escape the chapel, but Lynn falters, suffering from stomach cramps. The couple are separated when Lynn is kidnapped by the heretics, a rival cult who wish to hasten the end of days, and their androgynous leader, Val. Blake is rescued by a man named Ethan, who has left Sullivan's cult. He tells Blake that Sullivan rapes the women of Templegate and once they are pregnant, orders them executed on suspicion of carrying the Antichrist. What? Fearing this fate for his daughter, Anna Lee, Ethan convinced her to flee and she became the Jane Doe that Blake and Lynn were investigating. As Blake rests under Ethan's house, Martha, an imposing woman wielding a large pickaxe and who is one of Sullivan's executioners, breaks into the home and kills Ethan after accusing him of heresy. Blake flees to another chapel where he learns from a tortured heretic being interrogated by Sullivan that Lynn is imprisoned in the mines under Templegate. I ain't had enough. Righteousness cannot pass in blood by loins, but the blood of your heart. I came Papa's gospel. I got met him a hundred times. If I knew where the outsider was. The prophet don't need your help in finding the devil's whore and interrupt me. North questions even now other heretics at chapel. God will guide. I ain't a heretic. Still. 
Take your penance. So do I! The outsider woman has this world's destruction in her womb! But Val and his apostate stole away the unborn enemy. The fiend's father has escaped! She will bear her filthy yield before dawn. We have only these few hours to find her and kill her and save this paradise from hell everlasting. Where is she? Where did Val take her? <laughs> I can't! This is for you, Josiah. Make the woman scream! Where's the woman? The womb that harbors the Antichrist! Throughout his journey, Blake suffers from progressively more disturbing hallucinations based on his childhood, all while being pursued by a grotesque monster. The hallucinations gradually reveal the events surrounding the death of Blake and Lynn's childhood friend, Jessica Gray, at their Catholic elementary school. Blake and Jessica, while staying late at their school, were caught by one of the teachers, Father Lodemilch, who was implied to have been molesting Jessica. Lodemilch sent Blake away, but as Blake was about to leave the school, he heard Jessica screams and saw her being chased. Blake discovered her to have fallen down the staircase, breaking her neck, with Lodemilch at the top of the stairs. Lodemilch covered their death up as a suicide by hanging, and the monster that has been chasing Blake throughout the school is a perverse, twisted version of how he sees the priest. Ah! Ah! Oh! 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 Fuck! Surviving numerous encounters with Martha and the religious other inhabitants, Blake escapes the town and finds a document revealing that Murkoff Corporation is the cause for everyone's insanity due to an experimental mind control station hidden somewhere deep in the mountains. Arriving at the mines, Blake enters Val's underground temple and finds Lynn, suddenly visibly pregnant. Sullivan's cult finally reaches them and kills the heretics, allowing the pair to flee. As dawn breaks, a freak lightning storm begins to destroy the town. Martha reappears and attacks Blake and Lynn, but a cross toppled by lightning from the chapel in the distance impales her. Blake and Lynn hurry to the chapel. Lynn gives birth, but dies soon after. Blake blacks out holding the newborn, implied to be an hallucination by Lynn's last words, there's nothing there. Sullivan greets Blake as he wakes up. He claims that he had to kill all of his followers and employs Blake to kill the child before slitting his own throat. As Blake walks outside, he sees that Sullivan's followers have committed mass suicide via poisoning in preparation for the apocalypse, while Mozart is playing in the background. The sun grows brighter and Blake is engulfed by the light. He has a final vision of chasing Jessica through the school. When he catches her, she promises that she will never let him go. And they start praying. Now the light has gone away. Savior, listen while I pray. Begging thee to watch and keep. And send me quietly to sleep. 
Watchful Savior, wash away all I've been wrong today. Help me every day to be gentle, gentle, more like thee. And that ends yet another episode of History Behind the Horror. This episode was really sad. This is a really sad game. Like, initially when I first played this game, I kind of was confused on the story. And then I did the lore videos, and then I was kind of caught up. But then also doing this video, I also learned some more stuff. Like, the Jane Doe situation was actually Ethan's daughter that I, I guess I didn't know or I forgot. And the whole Jessica situation, man. And this... This game was just sad. A very sad story. I still prefer the first one over the second one, but now that I came back to this game after so long, this game is actually really disturbing and again, really, really sad. But I did enjoy doing this video, and you if you also enjoyed yourself here tonight, you would love to see more videos like this in the near future. Please make sure to like this video and share it. It helps the channel out more than you know. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, because we got some things coming up soon that I'm sure you wouldn't want to miss and make sure you always hit the bell notification because there are things coming up that I'm sure you will want to be notified for and you cannot be notified unless you hit that bell notification. And last but certainly not least, make sure you guys put a comment in the comment section about what you thought about this episode and for any suggestions for future HBTH episodes. I'm always looking for new episode ideas and you guys are always coming up with really, really great ideas and I really do appreciate it. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in to this video tonight. And as always, if you're not too scared, I will see you on the next episode of History Behind the Horror.